this is going to be the first edition of what I think I'm going to call Lucid's Lessons on YouTube. Today, I figured we'd start out with maybe something a little easy. Um, I'm going to go in order in the Academy on every map, at least in competitive, and kind of show off all of the tips and tricks for movement, corners, things like, you know, that I just find effective, useful. Uh, we're going to be jumping around, just doing some stuff, and hopefully I can show you some effective things that kind of get you to that almost 100% mark on hitting some things or just making you more consistent across the board or maybe some difficult uh, jumps or tricks or just any of those things. Uh, I'm not going to get into the technicality of every little thing because there's just some stuff that uh, I've definitely seen, maybe even for Aquarius. You know, you've seen people going from like top pink two or P2 just hitting like a thrust slide or a curb slide to get to like top base um, with a thrust. It's like, I'm not even going to really be doing that stuff. I'm just going to be doing some nitty gritty, like smaller details um, or even some things that people have talked about that maybe don't really know the ins and outs of. So some people have been waiting for this video for a while and we'll be, uh, we'll be starting with Aquarius here. Let's just jump right into it. So before I do anything, I also want to explain maybe a little bit of a breakdown for uh, what I personally do for training. Um, whenever I am in the training mode, I always put on like BR snipes, uh, equipment, usually probably pole, scrapple shot, infinite ammo, deathless, always on for me. I always like to keep the enemy bots usually at four, but for today we're keeping at zero. Um, let's see. Usually you can also have the bot shooting difficulty as well as movement difficulty set up to Spartan and have that going. So yeah, that's just my settings that I usually set to, but for, like I said, for the sake of the day, we are just going to have no bots, nothing really going on here, just me in the map, you and I actually in the map. So simple stuff that uh, I'm sure some people are aware of. This is just uh, probably something you've seen with Shyway, but I'm going to probably go into some details. Just This is more like an insight to how I view jumps in certain areas, what I do to make things a little bit more consistent. So for example, with like P2, you know, you're hitting some normal clambers. This is always pretty basic. However, there's of course a invisible block that is kind of sitting right at this general square right here. And maybe you've got your own sort of uh, detail on what you do for it. However, my way of like getting up here consistently, because what is effective about getting onto this jump is of course it cancels or cancels out any need for a clamber. You just kind of get up, guns ready. It's a little bit awkward, especially if you're trying to turn. And sometimes you might even have to like clamber or you will just end up clambering. However, the effective thing is to always just envision the block being right here and just kind of going down this line this entire way in between this space right here where these X's are. That's pretty much where you want to be like kind of jumping for. And sometimes you have to find the right spot to hit it. But as long as you're holding forward and aiming, like you just have to envision your feet being right at the center of where your reticle is landing. You hold forward almost the entire time in that space and it allows you to kind of... Uh, negate the clamber that'll happen, allow you almost to do a step jump. So this is where step jump can also be very effective, because if you're holding forward, and even crouch, I usually hold crouch here, you see I kind of just hit that corner. Sometimes I'm still going to hit a clamber, but you'll hit this corner, and you'll just slide right over. And another means to make this effective is you hit this jump, and you can instantly turn to hit the camo. And that is a very, very good use to get to that camo just a little bit faster and a little bit more sneaky. Rather than instantly jumping up, maybe there's another person on the other side of pink. Or typically, people are going to be thinking they're watching you from their top of the base, whether it's blue or yellow. Watching this general P2 jump up area. And they just, you instantly hit that corner from right this spot right here that I'm aiming at. People are not typically going to be pre-aiming this zone. They're going to be pre-aiming the other side. So it just gives you that extra little buffer that uh, you could use a lot of times. Now, something that has been uh, brought up before in terms of movement as well for the opposite on the car side, L side, whatever you want to call it, we all different calls. Typically car side is what it's referred to. There is a jump that gets you to car three, similar to like the invisible block over here on both sides as well. I mean, just mention that as well. This is on both sides, that invisible block in that same exact zone on pink. Sorry, a little, little flashback to that. But you can do something very similar and it's been kind of like a unknown thing for a while and I, I have found out the way or I had found out the way to do this and it's not easy however there is a relatively consistent manner to gauge for and now 
I don't know if this is always available depending on what kind of video settings you're on, but at least right here you can kind of see a line that goes straight down. Maybe get a different angle. Like, to the left of my reticle, you can kind of see a straight line going down on this, uh, this clamber spot. That is where you're going to want to jump into while sprinting. And whenever you do that, sometimes it is a very difficult spot to kind of land. It'll most of the time push you straight forward as long as you're running at it at the exact spot that you need to land. And this is a very difficult spot to consistently get, but once you kind of get the, the flow of it, because it really matters when you jump, it'll just push you straight over just like that. Now, honestly, if you're going to start practicing, I, I suggest starting from this side because you can do this on both sides, but you'll notice that there is not a very similar like straight line like there is on the other side. This side looks pretty, pretty clear. There's a little bit of geometry that's kind of messed up, but there isn't just a straight line going down like there is on the blue side over here. However, this exact zone on the other side is pretty much the exact spot you want to aim for. And so to kind of guide me, I usually try to aim for this, you know, gray re rectangle that you see right here. This is, there's this black line right here and then a gray rectangle right next to it, which I believe is still in the case right here. So this is essentially the spot that you have to jump for on this side. And just like that first try, we glide ourselves right up. This is very difficult to kind of like feel out, but... Hopefully with that information, you can kind of just start trying to practice to hit the jump. Uh, you don't always need to be sprinting. However, sprinting, I would say, makes it a lot more consistent. And you don't always have to actually hit this exact zone. It's just more so, you know, this is what I have been gauging my jumps off of most of the time to try to push up. But you can even see there, like, I was kind of off just a little bit. But as long as you're kind of in this window of, like, right here when you're jumping, it'll give you an okay enough buffer but you want to try to still stay as close to that line zone that I was talking about. Because there you go. You just get to, skip, you get to skip the clamber animation uh, in this motion. Some things that are also uh, a little bit more niche and not all too useful. There is what's still called overjumping uh, that we have experienced before. And these spots, these boxes right here, are also an opportunity to do that. Hopefully, <coughs> hopefully I can actually hit this jump. This is another example of some zones that are quite difficult to land consistently. Um, but just some more animation skips right there. There you have it. Really, I haven't done this in a while, but uh, you know, you just practice enough. You can kind of get the feel for it. Sometimes you even get the over jump on, uh, on some of these objects, but it just doesn't really let you hit it sometimes you just need the right momentum you need the right angle and you got to just get that timing you got to just get the timing down uh, a lot of it's just pure practice so not to forget this can also be done on the yellow side of the map and yeah it is still a very effective means to skip the animation of clambering uh, a lot of this stuff is very niche however i think long term you know getting a video out here like this to kind of explain some of the small details that at least I use or what I've noticed has, uh, you know, can maybe push the the meta a little bit further and give some people some ideas of like how to try some of these things out. Maybe they can find, you guys can find out some more consistent matters of uh, making these things happen. But this is all I got for now um, for some of these things. But you just let me know in the comments. Let me know in the future in the stream, however you're feeling about this stuff. Um, moving on, one thing I want to mention about these generators, or these gen, utility, whatever you want to call it. Again, we got some different callouts. Uh, if you have a thrust, you can actually make it to these little containers. And I feel like this is probably relatively known. However, it is something that you don't see too many people utilize. Um, this is uh, something in yellow and blue. It's a little weird. Little, little uh, interesting spots to uh, utilize, but you never know. Sometimes if you're just in the right spot, use that thrust and people people are never going to be looking up here like let's just be real people are hiding in this corner people are hiding on the head glitch sitting on these walls like people are hardly ever going to be sitting in that top corner and if you're coming in from up top even like you're looking down low you're looking down here you're not looking up top so just something to keep in mind change of uh scenery for uh you know your little hideout spot in the gen space so well, i think this may be the last little piece of tech or something that I hardly see people utilize is actually hitting, you know, some curb slides. This is kind of an awkward zone to be in sometimes, but if you hit a curb slide at the proper time, 
from this P2 zone. You can actually make it directly in the fridge without a need for thrust, but it is a very tight window uh, to hit. So I used to practice this a lot, but if you hit it right, you just make it straight in. If you're trying to hit just a nasty slide. I'm not sure. I really don't see too many people try to hit that. You know, some of these commitments can be very difficult, but, you know, as long as you hit that curb slide, hit a perfect curb slide on this zone, and then you want to try to make sure that you're hitting, you know, the jump at this corner a little bit further along. If you try to hit the jump off the stairs or you try to hit the jump, you know, further back from here, you typically won't make it. Um, I do believe there is like a more perfect curb slide that can allow you to just get some super momentum. Uh, I usually find that to be very difficult to kind of set up, especially in these uh, situations. But, you know, you just kind of do what I'm doing here. You try to set yourself up, jump a little bit late. There you go. You make it in the fridge, ready to collapse in on somebody here or just get a different angle on the base. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing. Do another rundown of Bazaar. Now, most of you know at this point, Bazaar is actually out of the competitive rotation. Um, it kind of got voted out, got ousted, casted down. Most of us really didn't appreciate it at the highest level. So, uh, you know, bizarre for me, I, I, I still kind of liked, but it was more so there's just some cool things that I like to do on the map that I'm going to show you right now. Uh, so I'm actually going to show off some things that maybe you've seen plenty of clips of me doing some, you know, just some cool stuff. Maybe it has to do with flag or, you know, hitting a certain jump um on these doorways by like the big door and whatnot well i'm going to give you the details on how to hit those right now uh before i get started though there's actually a pretty interesting sort of uh i don't even know what the term is maybe a drop slide uh, this is a little bit more different this is like an edge slide or something where this space right here is a little bit or this block right here is a little bit too tall to hit like a curb slide on and the tech for some of these taller blocks is to hit the edge for almost like a singular step and then you get a major slide like that exactly like that um that is kind of how this stuff works is you almost need to take a singular step and kind of walk at it completely uh parallel to the side so your your like left foot needs to take a single like singular step on this edge and then instantly hit like a turn to uh i would say effectively maximize that sort of jump and then you get that type of boost so didn't really get to utilize that too much uh, in comp play i was trying to pull it out here and there whenever i could but it's very difficult to pull off but you know go crazy i think uh, many of you can probably practice that plenty um that's kind of all i got for my tips on that i tried to set up certain like lineups to set myself up for like doing it every time but it just doesn't really work out i usually suggest just looking down and trying to hit like a you know just a quick you're running like horizontal and you just kind of or parallel and you just kind of hit the turn as soon as your feet touch it you can also do it off of like a sound cue a lot of times where you know you hear your feet hit the edge like that you hear like the like the crunch of your feet hitting the uh the block and as soon as that happens a lot of times you can just you know hit that turn instantly hit that slide and it is also applicable for red and blue base all right moving on so this is probably one of the most, uh, I don't know if, if famous is really the right, right word, uh, famous jumps on this map. A lot of people have tried it. A lot of people have succeeded. However, I don't know if anybody has nearly as a consistent strategy as I do. And that's one thing that I'm going to bring up um, a lot of times for a lot of these jumps is like there's definitely a science to a lot of jumps. Some of them are kind of like something you have to feel out. However, with this, for example, I'm going to show you exactly what I do and where I set myself up. I don't know if the tire is in my way, but we're going to just try here now. Let me see. Test this out real quick. Okay. This feels almost a little bit different. I wonder if they changed something. They did not. Okay. Where I aim matters a lot. And I'm going to mention this a few times with a few different jumps. Where you aim matters a lot. Where you're moving your left stick matters a lot as well. So typically I'm going to aim in this like... I'm trying to visualize this the best way um let me get a feel out for it real quick so there is an invisible block right here and you can't you don't really see it floating out it's just kind of there and your feet can only really catch it so the way you want to go about it is you want to always be holding forward you want to always hold forward the entire time until you get to that block so as you can see you can see my br swaying that's because i'm holding forward this entire time and my reticle is pretty much like almost right under where I'm going to end up inevitably walking towards. 
So I aim in this general vicinity. It doesn't have to be this exact spot or that exact spot. It can just kind of be in this general area here. And as long as you're holding forward, you can see that my feet catch on the wall. And sometimes you're going to have to keep feeling it out. Sometimes you may want to, maybe depending on how you are, you want to hold a little bit more to the left or a little bit more to the right. But you need to make sure, if anything, you want to try to hold forward and just guide your reticle to the correct space. And then you hold backwards as soon as you can feel your feet catch. So it's going to take a bit of a, a little bit of a time to uh, get used to it. And I also recommend not looking straight up because you kind of need to hit that quick turn um, to the right after, you know, you hit the jump. And that's why, like, I usually recommend just staring straight on. And then you hold forward, feet catch, hold backwards, and there you go. You make the jump, you hit the clamber. Um, this is my step-by-step -step process on how I think you can get better first. So first thing you want to do, you know, you just get into the corner, make sure you're all set up, aim in this general vicinity, you hold forward, and just make sure that you're finding the right zone of where you want to aim so that you can actually feel your feet catch, like so. And then if you keep holding forward, you'll actually stay there for, like, a second feel out that like full half a second to a second of your feet being up here and see i even stood up there for a lot longer than i thought i could so that's when you know you're finding the sweet spot once you find that sweet spot get into the momentum of then holding forward holding forward and i'm missing here holding forward and then holding backwards to hit that jump because you really don't you don't want to be holding forward the entire time otherwise you're going to have not enough time let me show exactly what happens if you keep holding forward the entire time like you just Try to hit this jump, and then you won't have enough time to actually turn around. So you just need to flick your stick backwards in time to really hit this jump effectively. So you keep holding forward the entire time, and then backwards, and then it's just a simple flick of the right on, this, on the stick, and, you know, here you are. You're just sitting up here. And that's how you do that jump. That is the science from what I have made for myself to hit that jump. Staying with the similarities between one side of the other. You know, things are a little different on the big door. There is no, you know, invisible block to jump on that's close to this door right here. However, we all know of, you know, these pads being, having like uh, some, some solid foundation to it. Now, typically, how I like to view this side is I like to go for this metal sheet right here. Because it, it really has the tallest point um, out of anything on this side. And it's very secure because if you try to stand on this sentinel beam, you know, you can stand up here, but sometimes it's like it's a little finicky. This entire area is a little finicky. So, again, it's just something that you're going to have to feel out. And then you kind of can just gauge, or you're going to have to feel out the speed and the angle at which you're coming at because it really matters the height that you're standing at when you jump. Because this, uh, this corner is actually so tiny that hitting this jump consistently can be very difficult. So, so what I'd like to do is I like to walk, but then I'll hit sprint in the air so that whenever my feet touch the ground, sprint will automatically kick in for me. I'm not sprinting. You can also do this sprinting the entire time. That also can be a thing. However, I find that I land at the highest point if I'm not sprinting initially. And again, this, even for me, and I practice this a lot, believe me, it's very difficult. It is not easy to manage um, every single time until you know you practice enough. But even then, you'll, you'll just find yourself slipping on the, uh, the corner here enough that like it seems so close yet so far but you know you hit the peak like i just did and you can manage to hit that jump far more consistently than you could before and that is what i do there you go just like that now you know maybe you think i just sat here for 20 minutes to hit those like three jumps it took me like just a couple minutes maybe like a minute to hit like three jumps and that's me you know i haven't been practicing this for many many hours for probably a couple months now i put enough time in though initially because i've spent hours doing these jumps to uh kind of get it down and that's what it's going to take if you really want to make sure that you are consistent just keep those tips in mind to uh to hit some of these jumps and you know you're good to go okay so now many of you maybe have seen this and uh have seen clips of this and just seen me doing it in stream it's not so uh so much a thing now since Bizarre Flag is no longer in rotation, but uh, I'm still going to break it down anyway for you guys just so you can kind of understand the concept. So you pick up the flag. Obviously, this is just a kind of the general concept for getting the flag out. You see me getting it here. You also see we have Unstable Packet Loss. Perfect. And so here is a piece of tech 
that I'm really not sure many people fully understand the difference, um, truly, when it comes down to flag tossing. However, if you are holding forward, especially sprinting and holding forward, while you release the flag, it gets a much further toss than if you were to just um, kind of release the flag and walk backwards. So, like, this is me walking forward and walking backwards. And the flag lands right there. However, whenever you are actively holding forward while the flag is releasing from your hands, it gets a much further toss. And it can even go farther than that. There's a certain, like, sweet spot to it. Um, but I, I think that's kind of all the details that you really need to know. Truly, momentum matters a lot with your flag tosses. I don't know how many people really, truly understand that. But, again, it does matter where you're looking and, like, how far up you're looking. Because if you're looking too high up, it doesn't go far enough. If you're looking too low, it obviously doesn't go too high up. So you need to like find like almost a sweet spot. And if you hold backwards on your left stick like that, you also don't toss it far enough. So very, very important to uh, get the momentum that you want. I think the unstable packet loss is really not helping. However, if you utilize that tech well enough, your flags will land here. And I think that's a very important thing that people haven't really realized. Is like Sometimes I even get flag tosses that land here. Like They land almost near the middle, and that makes it even easier for these uh, grapple shot runs that I'm about to explain. All right, so the lineups for these grapple shots have developed for me running out, and then you want to make sure that your feet are almost touching the ground right at the edge of where the flag is. You don't want to be like landing right on top of the flag, otherwise uh, you might almost shoot past it before it gives your Spartan the animation to be able to pick it up. However, I jump, I will grapple, and then I'm, I almost look to the left and also pull to the left with my left stick. So I kind of get this momentum of, look, get enough momentum, and then, you know, you fly off. Because you really need to get that speed built up very quickly whenever it's sitting there like that. And you really only get that if you have a very far off grapple. And this really isn't, it's not the worst, but like you can even do it from right here too, and then just kind of go straight on. I just find that like some of the angles feel a little bit more natural um, whenever you toss the flag and kind of run off a certain way in like a competitive match before. Whenever I toss this flag, I don't want to be moving forward the entire time for anybody in these pillar top rockets regions to uh, see where I'm like coming out from very instantly. So that's why like you s see me a lot in my runs. I am facing towards the BR, and then I instantly turn around, and then I again I pull away with my stick, and also pull away with my vision to kind of give me that effective uh, amount of speed and momentum. Because if you're just kind of standing still here. It just doesn't really work that well. That's why like, you almost kind of hit like a hook turn. Like you're hitting like that sort of C or J like formation almost to kind of get that momentum and get that right angle as well as like the ability to be sprinting into your slide that you're going to be uh, using to grab this flag. And unstable packet loss always prevails, but there is a heavier toss right there. That is just an example of uh, the distance you can kind of get. And that even applies for any flag, but it really is most important on this map. But even from not this angle on BR, what I initially started setting up from was back here, you can almost jump, and then you just go on a straight line straight from the palm trees, from this uh, palm tree area. And that, again, it just allows you to get that proper angle because sometimes it's just difficult to be... Like, you don't want to be jumping too far out, too high, like, out in the air for people to instantly be getting shots on you. It's always really important to be in a safe region so that you can get this uh, initial run from a safe spot, and then you're probably almost one shot here a lot of times, or half shields, making it in, but if you took that extra shot or two, you might just not make it. So that is the safest possible route, I would say, to make sure that the uh, flag is in a okay spot. And now this is a bit newer uh, tech that, or not really so much tech, but a new route that like, say for example, I try to do my flag run, I mess it up, I'm like, oh man, all right, it's down here now, the flag is like dead for a little bit. You know, you, you clear out some space, you can get a touch on flag. However, in my opinion, what I do with the flag is I usually like to still toss it up. And what that means is, like, you can either still get up here and, like, get across to your side of the map and still probably grapple it from up top. A lot of times that could be the case. Or, if you still want to essentially accomplish the same type of routing from one side of the map to the other and you still want to hit that, like, grapple slide to make it in towards the, uh, the tree... What you can do, say for example, you clear this out, you sprint back out, you can hit the grapple, turn away, you do the exact same tech of pulling away and looking away so you can kind of build that momentum and then swing back in. You want to do that off the ground. 
uh, after you toss it. And this is all very safe. Uh, a lot of times, I, I already had tested it out before, I think even in uh, a couple of the past tournaments, uh, the past couple lands. But you know, you're very safe down here. You want to get your shields just back down, and you can kind of back up to set yourself up. You kind of twist it, and you want to make sure that you're angling your camera where you're going to finish at. Because if you're angler, angling your camera away, that is where things just don't really work out. Because you need to make sure that you're facing... See, I, I'm shooting off closer to this doorway, and that's just because of the momentum. But if you can almost turn yourself around before you're picking up that flag, like so, then you make it in almost in the same effective manner. So just something to keep in mind. So overjumping uh, still is a thing that can be utilized on a few different maps, uh, particularly right here in this alley. I'm sure you guys have seen a video uh, of some people hitting this jump, and it is very, very effective. Again, very uh, niche, but overjumping is a very useful uh, tool, which obviously, whenever you don't have to jump over here to hit that second jump and then get up here, you can just instantly, you know, hit one to the next. But this, again, overjumping is very, very weird and difficult to uh, manage. The The best tip I can give for overjumping is to imagine that your feet are gliding past the corner at, like, the very first frame. So you're jumping kind of late, and you're trying to make sure that your feet are hitting this corner. And this has been explained before, but I'm just going to give, like, a quick lesson on it again. Um, I think you need your maintain sprint on. Um, I don't need... I don't think you need... Uh, so you have maintain sprint on. I usually play with step jump on. I don't believe step jump is necessary. However, um, I think it helps with some jumps anyway. But you want to make sure that, like, on the first frame that you see your weapon... So let me... Whenever you are sprinting and you land, you see your gun, like, start swaying as soon as, like, your feet touch whatever you're interacting with. Uh, whenever you're hitting the ground or colliding with anything, your feet are colliding with anything, you, th you see your gun go down, you're going to see that exact same thing instantly happen whenever you clip the corners correctly of uh, any box or angle that you're coming at um, with these over jumps and that means that like that is the window that you have to jump almost instantly after as you saw my gun goes down very quickly maybe you, you can even rewind uh, to see like the gun is down whenever I'm sprinting already and then it almost comes back up and it goes back down uh, in a very small frame window and as soon as that is available I think I got it there but I jumped a little too late that actually will not allow you to hit the jump. But if you hit it within that frame window, it is uh, free reign at that point. And it can be done on both sides. Um, I think I like to do it, or I can do it a bit easier on the red side, but it's still the same, uh, you know, effective method on blue and red. Um, still just as difficult on both sides. So this is just a little, very minor detail, but something important. Uh, that I started to utilize a lot was not clambering whenever you're jumping out of the trench here. You can walk up these sand piles, and these are, I think, sand piles on both red and blue side, and you can manage to just slip on by in this corner. Honestly, way better instead of just, you know, there's a lot of times people are sitting right above you, so rather than letting them shoot right above you, you can be facing the entire way and then just put yourself in this corner and never have to clamber. Uh, I've found that there's plenty of times where you want to make sure that you always have your gun ready and you be as involved in the gunfight as possible because if you're down a shot in this game it is very difficult to bring yourself out of it all right so that about covers uh all that bizarre has to give in terms of movement uh there's other also like snap slide things to mention however i think snap sliding will inevitably inevitably be taken out so um i'm not really even going to go into the details if it happens to stick around then maybe i'll make a snap slide video of some of the important snap slides that i appreciate on some of the maps but just for the general movement and things that uh, Bazaar has to offer, that is what I got. So hopefully you guys learned, you know, a good bit from this map. So, on to the next map. We're going to be going in alphabetical order for most of this, and I will be doing a separate video to continue the series for all the movement on the other maps. Uh, so that's why we start with Aquarius. We are, we just did Bazaar, and now we're going to finish with Catalyst for this video. So, loading into Catalyst. Uh, Catalyst is honestly a fairly basic map. Uh, there really isn't too many nitty-gritty details that I could tell um, or that I've been able to find out. There are some, and I will show them off today because uh, there, there honestly is some crazy things to, uh, to accommodate for on this map that really haven't been utilized. But to start off with, there is a slide that can be hit off of these um, edges right here. We can. Uh, I'm just going to keep calling them edge slides for now where we kind of hit 
the very corner of this of this block, and it allows you to just get a major boost if hit effectively just like that to land down here onto overshield. It is very, I would say, very inconsistent uh, to pull off. I've spent hours trying to hit this, and uh, it's the same thing as it was on Bazaar. Uh, very good for maybe hitting a start. However, it could also be equally bad if you just happen to miss like your jump. You can even slide right over the bridge or just under to like almost cut your momentum and fall off. So it's a very uh, give or take, I'd say, um, on like what it can effectively give you as well as if you use this off like the rip you might just have people absolutely blasting you across the map that's how a lot of starts go with catalyst so just something to keep in mind but you know it is a possibility so use at your own discretion uh let me try to think uh okay so this is the other slide that people have noticed that i'm doing hitting these corners and landing down here and then finding my way across to the other spikes now, the, these slides are still uh, pretty specific, but I would say they're not hard enough to the point that they're impossible or they feel like they're impossible, but there is a specific method to what I do. And again, it's still very risky because in a normal game, I don't always have a grapple hook to pull me back up like so. So another thing to use at your own discretion, but you know, very high risk, pretty high reward though, because being on the spikes is very important. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you don't even have to hit the clamber. You can. You don't have to hit the perfect slide to always make it across. You just need enough momentum at the right time and right area to uh, find yourself making it across across pretty smoothly. So, the I just wanted to kind of show off the slide a little bit. Let me just get into a little bit more detail. Detail. So to start off with, you need to make sure that you are standing. You can't stand on this edge right here, otherwise you slide off. So you just kind of need to be standing on this side, the right side of this uh, corner, this edge. And you, I typically like to face my reticle in this zone and just hold straight. So I'm going to hold forward here facing that. And that usually sets me up pretty well, like so. Now, maybe you can move pretty slow to kind of lock yourself in to that area. However, I find that like it doesn't always lead me to exactly where I want to because it really matters where your feet are at. And then I hold forward. So I'm holding forward this entire time. And I'm hitting, I'm just holding slide or holding crouch. To hopefully hit it but as you can see like i get close or you can get very very close and you can do this on both sides as well uh facing the skewer or facing the sword side it doesn't really matter it's all the same exact slide but sometimes you just get bumped or your feet are in a weird position and you find yourself just not really getting it just right so it's very very specific however no matter what happens the important aspect is that you have enough momentum while you're falling and then you're hitting the edge of the ramp right here and this is where drop slides got nerfed uh, previously in Season 2. Otherwise, this, this slide would probably be very, very easy to hit every single time. It is now way more uh, difficult to just consistently hit because you can't just like hit the ramp down here and then get the same amount of momentum. Uh, you have to make sure that your full momentum drops at this, essentially from like right here to right here. And you're going to get that full burst. And if you don't, as you can see, I'll look down. If you go past it, you're not going to get it, obviously. And if you get too ahead of it, it'll it'll just be too short. So I think that was... Nope, I was a little bit ahead of it. I think I landed almost like more so up here. You Again, that extra distance to land closer to this edge really does matter a lot. And this for me is still semi-inconsistent, but it's like I've been able to pull it off enough that this method is something that I just always try to rely on. I just try to make sure that I'm almost pushing past this wall right here, still facing... And then just kind of wrap around the corner. And, you know, there you go. That wasn't the perfect slide, but I hit a clamber. So, you know, you guys can even give me some uh, some thoughts on how you feel like you're hitting it. I like to just kind of push past the wall. And then, you know, it's close. Very close. That means whenever you're getting that close, that means you're just right on the cusp of it. You're so close. Um, I usually like to jump at this edge as well. I want to go from, like, this edge to that edge rather than, you know, trying to hit a deeper corner so that I can always hit the clamber or just travel the shortest distance possible whenever I'm going that far. It is uh, it is very, very annoying to uh, try to make this jump. Either way, um, something that is also important to note about when you jump after your slide, that's why I usually like to shoot off from right here. If you'll notice subtly whenever I'm walking across this ledge, maybe I can you can tell almost from the, there is a slight bump in elevation and as weird as it sounds, that jump 
or that little bump in elevation also still matters a good bit because you slide past it very easily. However, if you're jumping right here rather than right here, it does make a difference. Again, it, it all really does add up to kind of almost be a science of it. And I jump late. Oh, I, I really felt like I just glided right past that. However, I'm trying to just give you the tools to make it happen. But even for myself, who's practiced, practiced this a lot, it is not easy to master, as you can see. But, you know, you get enough practice in. I really haven't done this in a while again. And, you know, it's still proving to be quite difficult. But uh, hopefully you guys can find your own thing that works for you. I think that is one of the most important aspects to this game and the movement. There you go. Finally can hit one. So it's just about finding the right setups, I'd say, for a lot of people. Um, that kind of gives you that right space to uh, to make just make it happen. Like you know, it doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you can do it. That's just how this game works. All right, enough about that slide. That was a pretty long tangent, but I'm gonna start showing you guys some uh, some very interesting things that maybe you have seen, haven't seen. I don't think a single person has used this, but I'll just give it away for now because this is uh, pretty crazy. Uh, you can actually sit on top of this bar in each side of the base. It's a little bit diff uh, difficult, not really too difficult, but it, it's very precise. And you can't do it everywhere. Like, I don't believe I can actually be standing on this side uh, and land up here. But you can use a repulsor and you can use a grapple shot. And I like to actually stand on this, uh, this extra little bump here we were just standing on before. But it, you can see, like, that side actually pushes you off. But if I'm on this side, and I go up here, you hold forward, you're locked in. I don't know how many people are going to use this. Probably some people are going to pull it out of matchmaking after giving this away. But um, at this point, I was just like, screw it. You guys can have it. Uh, uh, we'll see how that, plan how that pans out, if it's even legal. I, I never pulled it out because I never knew if it was even a legal spot uh, to utilize. But... I honestly think using the grapple shot is actually harder than the repulsor. But if you stand up here and kind of stand in this spot, again, you want to just kind of set yourself up just a little bit. Right here, you just look down. Oh, it was a little a little too much. That, that's the difficult part about uh, utilizing. I think I crouch. I just hold crouch and then push myself up there. You hold crouch the entire time, just look down, jump up, and just keep holding forward. That's the important thing. Once you get up there, you want to just hold forward the entire time. Otherwise, you uh, you can easily like kind of push your way out, or just fall backwards. So uh, um, maybe I don't need to hold crouch the entire time until I'm starting to get further up there. I haven't done this in a while, so I'm trying to even remember myself while I'm explaining it. But this is the gist. And even though I bumped myself, you just keep holding forward, and you have a ledge to walk along. Now I'll even show off on this side as well. I want to do that. So. This side was like the skewer side for blue. However, you cannot do it, as far as I could tell, from this side on the red base. It pushes you out just like the uh, sword side in the blue base does, um, as it does for over here. However, if you're standing over here, you can actually sit up right here. Uh, whenever I first started testing this out, I believe it's like this entire side can actually be sat on. Um, even further back over there, or right here. However, I just find it to be more difficult because you have to manage your momentum whenever you're going up. Um, let me just test this out r real quick, see if I can even make it up there. Yeah, this is looking a little, looking a little chalked from this angle, but um, you get the, you get the idea. You get the idea. Um, you kind of just have to manage your momentum to make sure that, uh, just so that you're not just flying off, you know. So. That is the important tip to note. It's very niche, very situational, but uh, you know it could be proved to be very, very useful. So, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. I just was looking around for something, just trying to find anything that this map could offer, and there you have it. So, moving on, we're just gonna probably get back to some not so interesting ones or crazy spots, but uh, some extra movement that you can actually utilize so that you can effectively get from right here to either hallway. As long as you are standing on this edge while jumping, it has to be a little bit later than that, but uh, usually I think I like to jump closer to like right here. You can make these jumps, and now I'm just going to keep messing up while doing it. There we go. But you can make these jumps from these doorways, so if you happen to need to be chasing somebody, you hit the door coming through, 
I think these jumps, I don't know why, these jumps towards like the pink side, pink hallways, feel like a little bit easier. Um, but you can uh, easily hit these clambers on these corners to instantly start pushing automatically. You don't need to, you know, run around towards the uh, these shoulders, if you will, to get yourself around these uh, parts of the map. You can just kind of cut the corner. I, again, I don't know why I feel the way I do about this... Uh, swap over to thrust just if I keep messing up um it this this side just feels a little bit different a little bit more difficult a little bit more difficult but even there like the the clamber was very very low but it's it's fairly forgiving as long as you have the right momentum like coming down as well um like if you're already oh, that felt weird but if you already got the momentum it makes it that much easier um and you know you just make it straight into the hallway and you're ready to just start bouncing back into the fight right away Moving on, uh, I think some people have brought this up. I'm really not too sure. I think there was a clip of it with like Eric actually, whenever he was still playing, of him going out here. But you can walk along an invisible barrier on both sides of these platforms, and I'm not touching my stick at all. It unless you have a little bit of drift, like you are perfectly safe if you are walking along into these walls. Just to, to at least drop yourself on it, and there is a chance that you bump yourself off like that, or especially if you are sliding or sprinting. It can make it very easy um, to kind of be bouncing around and it just kind of forces you out. However, you know, as long as you're kind of hugging this wall, it's very safe. If you walk too far into that wall there, like like you see, you know, you, you instantly bump off. That's why you almost need very little momentum to just kind of drop in and then here you are. You're just sitting on absolutely nothing. I'm very surprised this uh, has not been <laughs> patched out. Of all things, but uh, yeah, there you have it. Uh, another small thing, only on this side of the repulsor, but you can hit this sprint jump on that rock to get up to P2. If you just happen to want to get up there quickly, because if you're standing down here, you can't really make it. You can use the repulsor, but you have to walk up here, or you know, just walk up, hit the crouch. But if you're standing on this repulsor, you can make it up. That was a little bit late of a jump, but you can just hit the jump, instantly get up, get back in the fight very quickly. And then this was actually pretty popular for about like a week or so when uh, Nated showed, showed it off. And I actually never knew about this, but these rocks are in each of these corners of this uh, space over here. And, you know, it's very, it's very secure. It's actually very, very secure. Same thing with like the outer, uh, the outer repulsor zone. You can jump in between these. As long as you kind of wedge yourself into the corner, you don't really need you know, something to keep you up. If you have a little bit of drift, you got to be careful. Uh, you definitely can slide off. And if I jump into it and I just don't even hold anything, I actually still land. So it's, again, it's still very secure. I'm not, I do believe these are in every single corner, um, at least on this side. Uh, I'll have to actually check on the skewer side real quick. I don't believe there's anything over there. But uh, these are on the sword side, both sides. Each corner is very, very secure. Let's check this out real quick. And there is nothing on the uh, the skewer side. Just as a little heads up. Something to keep in mind. Alright. Um, another small thing to keep in mind. Some easy ways to uh, easily make your way back up to P2. Just jumping off these boxes. This is very accessible from uh, from down here. If you are, you know, you're getting chased. You're just trying to get away. A lot of people end up defaulting, just trying to like stay down here. But it's very, it's just very easy to find you out uh, whenever you do that. So I, I highly suggest trying to utilize this. Uh, you know, just using the movement, hitting the clamber. Uh, this is honestly a little bit harder to hit, but it's still very possible. Just kind of rounding this corner. If you know somebody's chasing you from the backside, just like hit the hit the clamber, and there you go. You don't even have to be out towards sword, because uh, hitting this sword clamber is very easy. Hitting that is very easy. Doesn't really cost you too much. However, you're a lot more exposed. Uh, especially again, if you're getting chased, like if somebody's you're in a fight with somebody down here, and like you're just trying to push back, I like to try to go for that jump. I also think it's very easy to kind of wind your way back. You know, there is a hole right here to fall into, but if you do it and you happen to mess up, so I'm just going to intentionally mess up and not clamber. If you happen to not clamber, you can always just turn back around in the air and hold forward. As long as you're holding forward, it'll move you back towards the platform enough to either instantly land back down. Or you can uh, you can hit that clamber if you really need to, just so you're safe. But this is always a very safe uh, 
escape engagement like type of zone. So there you go. Hopefully you uh, boost your movement IQ with uh, with those outplays. Now something else that's a little bit interesting that not many people know about, but this is another edge slide where we are going to hit this edge for about one step and you'll just see the momentum that I get off of it to land all the way over here. And this can be done on both sides. As long as you hit that first step and, you know, I think this being slanted actually makes it a lot easier than, say, the uh, the edge slide on Bazaar or the edge slide in the, uh, in the base already on this map as well. But the way I like to set myself up, actually, is with this corner right here, as long as you're kind of facing this direction as if you're straight on, and you turn on a dime as soon as you start dropping. So I'm going to run, turn, take a step, and then if you get it in the right spot, maybe I need to be a little bit more to the left. Maybe not so much over here, but more over here. Because our, our goal is to end up dropping on this edge, this slanted edge, for just like a single step. But you can't overshoot it. So that's why, like, it, it is very weird. It's very awkward um, to kind of practice this. Uh, another thing that I've spent many hours on, but once you get the feel for it, you can kind of really understand where you go about it. You really don't have to stand where I'm suggesting. It's just, again, this is one of my more simpler solutions for myself to try to land on that space. And I think I'm even getting it, but I might be holding crouch a little too early. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. I, I think I'm just botching it right now. I think I also like the other side a bit more. I don't know why, but there you go. Got one. We got one out there. Let me try to hit another one back to back. Damn. Let me, let me hit a little back to back real quick. For the one time. One more. One more. Oh, I overshot it. Last shot. Last shot. There we go. Back to back, kind of. All right. So that is very effective. Very useful. Again, you don't have to use the setup that I use. I think it's just very easy. To kind of allow yourself to look down at it. I think that's always a, another thing about these edge slides. Is like As long as you're looking down at the ground, it kind of gives you a better opportunity to hit it just like so. And even as I'm saying it, now that I'm taking my own advice, it makes it a lot easier to kind of hit the, hit them. But the, the window to hit those slides is definitely quite small. And you know I think this is a very effective uh, training spot for these edge slides anyway. And just this one in particular, because if you come into Academy and have the grapples like so, and you're hitting it right, you know, you just grapple back on up, get back on up, try again. And you can instantly get back into it, try to hit it, and there you have it. Here's another thing that many of you obviously know about, was uh, very popular for the clips as soon as the map had come out. However, with, these, uh, with this grapple run on the back side of the map and the outside of the map, you do not need to use all three grapple shots. I'm going to show you that you want to kind of hold off on using it and then turn and hold right. You want to try to pull your momentum all the way around this base so you don't have to use all three of your grapples. Because again, just like on Bazaar, like you want to maybe try to get some good grapple, uh, grapple shot flag runs down the middle of the map <clears throat> like you can in Bazaar. And if you use all three, you're already kind of out of luck at that point. And even on the way back, you can even do something similar. So I'm holding left, I'm looking left. I'm holding left, I'm looking left. And even over here, you can just drop on in with two grapples. So you don't want to just like be lazy with it and just like kind of look straight and then you're just going to kind of like look over here and then maybe go. But even then, like as long as you're swinging effectively, you can do two. Um, just, you just got to feel it out a little bit. You got to make sure you're pushing the grapple to its max. Uh, something to keep in mind is that this map has a very low very very low floor as you can see i'm falling a lot i'm i'm falling very very low but if you go too low that's where you kind of need the uh the extra grapple but i'll even just tr like just look at how low you can go and still grapple back up so just remember to keep that in mind you don't need to like overshoot or panic your grapple shots because you can just live outside this map for a very very long time uh as long as you have the grapples to keep you alive like i can even just like spam miss a few grapples and i'm still alive so you just got to be effective with it, and you'll be very, you'll be safe and sound. And now, I'm going to show you how to just effectively get the right setups for your grapple flag runs that you want to try to pull off on this map. This is going to still be very more applicable compared to Bazaar, due to just, you know, Bazaar being out now. But 
how this starts, and there's a couple different ways to go about it. I'm sure the popular clips that were springing around is what a lot of people know about is like where you kind of toss this, where you're like trying to grapple and like slide and like get across all in the same breath. And that works. That can work. However, I'm here to show you and just talk to you about, same with like the bizarre runs, where there is just a more consistent fashion. It may be a little bit slower at times. Thank you, 343, for the unstable pack of loss continuously. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so what I like to do instead, and this can be done either side of the map, on either side, whether it's skewer or sword, I just like to get the toss out and get it far enough out. You know, as long as it's in the middle of the platform, that should actually be perfectly fine. Um, and then you just back up. You just back up and you, you pull off this sort of this hook formation once again where you kind of run out face away from it face at it and then you just hit the slide this is way more consistent it is super super easy to pull off and again i see too many people just completely botch flag runs because like they just like stand in front of it and then like they aren't sprinting you're just kind of standing and then like you're just trying to like jump across which you can even do that like that's simple enough too but these flags need to be far enough out a flag being like a little too early can make things just a little difficult Let's see if I can even do it without sprint or without the sprint. Not really. So you need that space. You need that extra space to allow you to really get the effective momentum, whether it is with a slide or not, um, to really get that true momentum though. Uh, if it can be even further out, makes it even easier on you because you get to keep that full momentum early on. Because as soon as you touch this flag, you start losing momentum. Uh, that is why, like, it, it's best to have the flag as far as possible so that you are not, you know, losing it too early and you're not getting shot too early. Now, I'm also going to show how you can actually... Oh, you can actually do that. You can fall off the map of the flag, instantly reset it, your team's raging at you. That's what's going to happen. You can actually manage to hit just a normal slide with the right, am right amount of momentum to you and the flag both survive getting to spikes. I will say it is still fairly consistent to get the right toss um, to the zone um, just to get a, get it across spikes. However, um, you really need the flag to be right here if you want any chance for you both to live. But if you're just trying to get like a fast run, um, you know, somebody's just waiting on the other side, you're willing to die for it. You can even still do that, or if you still have a grapple, whatever, like, you know. You got you got plenty of options. You got plenty of options to make it across. And see, that flag still made it fairly far, but, again, this is a much more, like, this is a very unrealistic uh, route, because if you're trying to hit it, you know, you, you have to, like, set it up as far as possible. So that's why, like, again, this tech with throwing the flag that I showed off on Bazaar is very important. Everything's uh, quite a bit delayed. But see right there. There you go. Finally got a decent toss. You can toss it safely from up here. It's very difficult to do that consistently, though. And then now you need to hit... The, you have to essentially hit the perfect slide to make this happen. So this, this type of run is, like, damn near impossible. But, again, I just did a bad slide. And I can still get it across to my teammate who happens to be at spikes. Maybe I die like so, but it happens. As long as the flag gets moving and it's very effective like that, it's honestly very easy it's just going to cost your life more often than not. So hopefully you guys enjoyed some uh, lessons on the uh, these first three maps. The Lucid Lessons first edition that we got going uh, this time around. We'll be jumping back into it with uh, some more maps here in the near future. Let me know what you guys think, if they help, if they don't. Let me know the style. Just, uh, you know, we're getting back into the swing of some some uh, more unique content on the channel so yeah just give me the uh give me the vibe check on everything going on here and i'll see you guys on the next one later guys